Hello, welcome back. And today we're gonna to look at the MED Race Gearbox Steady Kit. So these are the two supports that go behind the gearbox to the back of the subframe. You see in front of me, we've got a really nice brand new heritage subframe. This is part of that exciting delivery of parts we had for a mini spares in the previous episode. You see it's got the twin bolts for the Mark I. Before we send this off to be stripped and repainted, we need a couple of holes drilled in this rather than drilling them into a freshly painted subframe for this gearbox steady kit. We do it now. Okay, so here's the gearbox steady kit, the race gearbox steady kit. You see it comes with the two steadies, one for each side. One of these rod ends is right hand thread and the other one's left hand thread. And it means you can turn the center turnbuckle to adjust the length and move the engine forward and backwards. And the whole idea of this is to stop it obviously rocking forward and backwards, breaking the exhaust manifold, which is quite a common problem if you've got the standard um, just the top engine steady fitted and it rocks around all over the place. So the kit's pretty easy to fit, but you do need to put a couple of holes in the subframe. So if I spin that round, we've already marked this on the subframe that's fitted in the car. You're gonna need to put just through this double section, double skin section here, there's one mark there and the same over on this side here. So there is a fair amount of leeway here because it's fully adjustable, so you can move that around. But I think if you put it through that double skin section there, that'd be nice and strong. Okay, so the bolts in the gearbox steady are 516 in diameter. So what we've just done here is drilled the, uh, the holes in the positions, but we've gone for the next size up just to give them a bit of clearance. So what we'll do now, just take the uh, the bears off the top of these holes here, which we just drilled, um, just with this three-point countersink, really. Just nice and simple. There we go. Okay, so we'll just um, spin it over now and we'll just debo the other side of the two holes. Okay, so that's all finished. Um, so it's off to the paint shop now to be blasted and painted. Okay, we can start building the front subframe up now for the Project 63. We've built one side to make sure that everything fits. First thing you need to do is fit the bump stop. And what you will find is there's two types of bump stop. Two screws and one screw. This subframe only has the one screw. Copper slip on the thread. And away we go then. So we just pop that one in now into the hole. If you don't put this on first, you won't get the nut on after you've put the donut in. So be sure you put this one on first. Just make sure it's nice and snug. We don't want this coming undone at a later date. What you might find on some cars, if you're lowering, lowering the car quite drastically, you might have to trim some of this off because what we don't want is when the subframe's fully loaded up, we don't want the top arm touching this or otherwise you won't have any suspension travel at all. So once you've got the car built up, make sure you've got a gap between the top arm and this bump stop. This is a red dot cone, which is the fast road sort of track day car cone. So we'll pop that in sideways, twist him round so he's in position. We actually have these in stock now if anybody wants to buy one, so on the website. And then drop that through and wind it in to the cone. Just put your finger on the inside of the cone, you'll feel then that the actual thread comes through. Make sure you've got it fully engaged. There we go, that's fully in. Drop that onto the top of the tower and then wind this down and as you wind it down it will actually compress the cone enough so that you can actually get the ball joint in and the top arm so what we've got here now is the ball joint actually fitted into the arm 
new bearings in the arm and the pivot pin for the shock absorber. We've got the, uh, the rear washer. This is the oil seal uh, washer. So this one goes on first and then the oil grease retaining ring, which is a rubber ring that just pops on over the top like so. So once that one's in position, you're good to go. Turn him over. Best thing to do is stretch the uh, grease retaining oil seal ring, whichever you want to call it, over the arm to make it easy to get into position. Adjustable ride platform on. We've got the ball joint in and the grease retaining seal is actually on the ball joint. So we're now going to actually flick everything into place. There we go. That's all in. Okay. Next job is spindle through the top arm. And then that will locate in the rear of the subframe just there. So that will now come through there. Copper slip on the nut. And away we go. Oh, it looks like the knuckle joint seal has just popped out. But anyway, go around to the other side now. What you'll need is you need the second washer, which is for this position. And that locates in the subframe, which then centralizes the spindle. So just ease that up. Pop that in place. There you go. That's gone into place now. Front plate now goes on over the top. And then that is held in place by two screws. We'll pop a little bit of copper slip on that one through there with a nut and the nylock. So what we do is now we'll tighten those two up. As you tighten this up, you'll now notice that the plate will actually pull the washer into the subframe to take up the end float on the shaft. nice and snug make sure the arm moves which it does nip that one up and then we'll put the other nut on this side so one other thing that we need to put in before we take the tension off the cone now is the little rebound bump stop which goes in just there so pop that in place There we go. So there we go, we're all back together now. Top arms in, pivot pin, droop stops in there, bump stops in here. We've just now got to take the compressor out and then the top half is complete. So we'll just slack this off now. So now we're going to move on to the bottom arms and tie rods. Now these are the MED bottom arms and tie rods, rows jointed, both ends and we've partially assembled these downstairs in the workshop. So we're now going to show you how these actually fit into the subframe. On this side, you'll notice that we've already assembled them. They've got the rose joint through the front end of the subframe here, running down the bolt holding the bottom arm to the tie rod and then back up inside with the rose joint through the pivot pin. You'll notice that it's got a gradual taper running from the weakest end at the bottom of the tie rod right up to where it's threaded into the CNC machined bracket that holds the rose joint. We do this because this is the weakest point and we've basically made it thicker to give it more strength. Going back to this end, we use a competition rose joint, all stainless steel fittings, and this is partially adjustable on car with the adjustment in the thread just here on the rose joint. But if you want to adjoin, adjust it any further, you can adjust it by literally taking the rose joint out of the subframe, spinning this round half a turn at a time, and then locking the nut back up. The bottom arms are fully adjustable on car. So basically, as it's fitted in, you just undo the lock nut, adjust it with this, and then re-lock the lock nut bat back up. Okay, once these are on and in position, the bottom arm adjustment 
will adjust the camber of the wheel and the tie rod will adjust the caster of the wheel and we'll come back to uh, how to set all this up once we've got some front subframe in the car we'll go through a complete suspension setup with you so firstly we're just going to put in the pivot pin so we'll pop that into position just there and then one of the spacers for either side of the rose joint now you'll notice that these are stepped and the narrow step side goes towards the rose joint to give it full movement so one goes on there okay so now we're just going to put the lower arm pin through the rose joint there we go okay now you need to put the spacer on the other side again with the narrow diameter towards the rose joint okay now locate the threaded end into the hole and then you'll notice that this end has got a flat on it and this flat locates against this piece of material that's welded onto the subframe to stop it spinning so onto there and push it home once that's home come around the other side okay we're not going to lock that up yet because we need to put the tie rod in place now now we've got this in place you'll notice the spacers either side of the rose joint are to take up the amount of material that is normally taken up by the rubber bush that's there so now we're going to put the uh, rose joint into the front of the subframe the rose joint comes with two spacers these are stepped spacers the reason they're stepped is one side goes against the nut and the stepped spacer there actually locates in the subframe like so and it positions the rose joint centrally in the hole so we'll pop one of the washers on this side we then pop the rose joint through we'll just have to wind it in a touch further just to make sure everything locates there we go so that now is in place okay so we'll just tighten that up now onto the actual nylock section which is easier done like so so now it's through the nylock what you do now is push everything back central and wind the lock nut back up to it okay if you if you're not quite sure as to where the starting point is prior to actually fitting all this if you predetermine from your original tie rod the dimension between the flat washer and the center line of the nut and then on the rose jointed one set it to the same length you know you're going to be very very close and the same with this you can predetermine very roughly where you need to be on the length and that will give you a good starting point but there we go that's more or less all in place now just needs a little bit more nipping up there we go so everything needs to be spanned up now tight and then that's those in place be careful with the bottom arms they are handed so when you fit them be sure that the large side of the taper is uppermost so when the taper of the ball joint goes in it's going in the correct way round you can get them on the wrong way round upside down and then once you come to fit the hub it won't fit so just remember the large side of the taper goes towards the top arm and it's the same with the top arm the large side of the taper goes towards the bottom arm so basically the big hole there and the big hole there ball joints go in between and then it all tightens up nice and secure so the next job we're going to show you is we're going to build the front disc brake assembly up with the ball joints the bearings in the hubs fitting the calipers and actually popping them onto the subframe after that we'll be then fitting the subframe in the car with the new engine <laughs> <laughs>